Amazon has a bunch of rules on its platform for sellers that you really have to make sure you follow. Some are ones that can be easily broken, and other ones are ones that, you know, it's a gray area, right? So the biggest thing when looking at rules on Amazon's platform is knowing what are the ones that are going to be a little bit of a slap on the wrist and other ones that are really going to end up just fully taking you out of selling on Amazon as a whole. Well, we're going to go over exactly the ones that you really should watch out for ones that are kind of up in the air, and then ones that absolutely will get you taken off the platform faster than you know it. So starting off, the number one place you should always be looking when you're looking about about uh, account health is the account health section. So whether you are looking at getting taken off the platform and you don't understand why, account health is always going to be the first place to check. There are a lot of different areas here, and some of them are a little bit more worrisome than others. So to kind of get an understanding of our account health, we are broken into three different sections. We first have our customer service performance, then we have our policy compliance, then third, we have our shipping performance. Shipping performance is only valid to FBM sellers. So it is only for FBM sellers. And then again, as well, with customer service performance, a lot of these are made for FBM sellers. Policy compliance can really be for anyone, uh, but looking at it, the ones in shipping performance to really watch out for. The biggest one that I see getting people taken off the platform is the valid tracking rate. People consistently to try and skirt the system will upload wrong or invalid tracking numbers, and that is one that very quickly, if you drop below that 95%, can get your account suspended, featured offer taken away, uh, and will get you kicked off Amazon very, very quickly. Late shipment rate under 4%, not as big of a deal. Now, if you do end up going above 4%, I always am gonna encourage, reach out to Account Health Assurance, let them know that you are on it, that you are taking care of the issue, and that everything is fine. Now, the third one here, the pre-fulfillment cancel rate, this is also a bit of a scary one. Pre-fulfillment cancel rate can absolutely get your listing taken down uh, for any specific product. They do look at you as an account for that 2.5%, but they more so are making sure that it's not a consistent product issue. Now, looking through, seeing the customer service performance. Customer service order defect rate. A lot of people don't fully understand what an order defect rate is. So we have two sections, the seller fulfilled and then the fulfilled by Amazon. Again, most of these are going to be about seller fulfilled. Now, looking at order defect rate, we can open this up real quick. You can see we're at 0.16. Now, order defect rate comprises all of these. So we are looking not at just uh, singular orders, but we are looking at all three of these different ones. So we consist of all three of these. Uh, for this one would be for the actual uh, FBM, and then this is for FBA. Now for negative feedback, it's exactly as it sounds. Uh, did you receive negative feedback for an order? Feedback is not a review of the product. Feedback is a seller review. So your seller negative feedback review. Uh, and then on top of that, we have A to Z guarantee claims, chargeback claims. Chargeback claims is the only one here, in my opinion, that will get you taken off very, very quickly. If you are consistently getting chargeback claims, uh, that is something that affects Amazon as it affects their revenue. They are put on the line as the middleman there and is going to be the biggest one that will get you really just kicked off the platform faster than you can know it. So if you have a chargeback claim, that's a really big problem. If you're consistently getting chargeback claims, that's an even bigger problem. You're less likely to have issues with any of these three if you are an FBA seller. Now, finally, in the account health section, we have our policy compliance. Policy compliance is the issue or the area where if you are going to get taken off the platform, this is where it's going to happen. So what I mean by that is that there are a few different areas where it really matters. So you can see here we have, for instance, a listing policy violation, which we can click into here and we can open this up. And when you look at these, it'll have a little bit of uh, data here. So it'll say what's impacted the specific product, the reason for the product, so it violates uh, some form of informational property, and then what was removed uh, or the action taken, bullet point removed, and then 
How does it affect your account health? This is what really matters, no impact. Now, what this means is that it is an issue with a listing, but it is not a malicious issue on your end that is actually affecting this account health rating of 508. The higher your account health, the better. You want this number to be as high as possible, but as you can even see, with only one issue, we're at 508. So it really is important to keep these out. This is where if you are going to get taken down, if you're going to get deactivated, suspended, anything like that by Amazon, the areas that you most need to be looking out for is you need to be looking out for product authenticity customer complaints. Again, making sure your product is authentic, making sure that there's no issues with it and that you are not selling counterfeit products. This is one of the largest areas that Amazon is looking nowadays to deactivate people. So large, in fact, that Amazon has actually released Amazon Project Zero, where they are helping to drive counterfeits to zero, right? So you can see some of the data here where they have 25,000 different brands they work with. They've been proactive on 700,000 different uh, selling accounts, trying to sell counterfeit items. It's 99% effective. Project Zero is entirely due to counterfeit items. So counterfeit is definitely an area. If you are selling counterfeit items, that is probably the number one crime you can commit on Amazon. You will get deactivated very, very quickly, especially if it's a very well-known brand. As we all know, hijackers are more and more prevalent every single day, but that's why things like Project Zero exist to help us mitigate that. But as a seller, you need to understand where do you stand in all of this. The next one that I would say on this list is definitely a crime you could be committing on Amazon, uh, or to Amazon, I should say, food and product safety issues. Amazon deals with food items very, very specifically. You have to make sure that your expiration dates are valid. You have to make sure that you don't have any issues, that you're not getting customer complaints on it. Everything in between with your, uh, with your food and your food items, and even thing this cross-reference to things like supplements. You have to make sure that with supplements, you are not having any form of wrongdoing or anything on the platform with them. If you have uh, a wrong claim, so for instance, you can see immune support, antioxidant supplement, right? Immune support. You cannot make false claims about your product. This is a really big area that you will end up having a lot of issues with, with your product being taken down off the Amazon platform if you are going through and claiming false things that your product does not do. This is especially apparent for things like su supplements in this day and age. So you want to make sure you don't have any form of false claim about what your product does, what the purpose of your product is. If you know it helps support your immune system, great. If it doesn't, don't claim that it does. There are some major issues that will arise on the account health side if you are making false claims about your product. More so, even on the supplement side, they have an entire section about dietary supplements within what can be uh, considered compliance services. So you can have what the compliance is, you can have third-party testing. They now have the manage your compliance dashboard in here where you can see all of your different compliance metrics uh, for the actual product as well. So you, if you need to get compliance, they have third-party testing now. Amazon takes supplements and their claims very, very seriously. Now, past that as well, the next one on here, which I would say is probably as important as supplements, uh, and it's regulatory compliance. Uh, regulatory compliance, it can also affect supplements. It can affect a lot of different uh, types of products, but regulatory compliance is something where Amazon themselves can be held liable. So if you are going to have a account health issue in any way, shape, or form on Amazon that has to do with regulation of goods, of your product, anything, and uh, complying with any government standard, those are type of things where Amazon can be held liable. The biggest crime you can commit to Amazon is making them look bad. <laughs> you really don't want to do that, and so that is one of the areas where if you are looking and you get your product taken down, you get your account taken down, you need to make sure you have your ducks in a row. Now, past all of the account health as well, what are some other areas that, for instance, you might end up having some overall issues? Well, uh, there's a pretty good one, and that would be specifically feedback. As we already talked about with feedback, 
not specifically in the feedback section, but more so how you deal with feedback. Now, when you're talking about how you sell your product, talk to the customer, Amazon has the lingo of they are the most customer centric platform there is, right? Their entire goal is to make the customer experience the best it can possibly be. So one of the things with that is that they have very strict rules and regulations around how you can request reviews, what you can do with reviews, how you can talk to customers, things like that. Reviews in general, feedback, anything like that is definitely an area I see people getting taken down off the platform all the time. When you are going through and you are requesting a review from a customer, you have to do it through a few different methods and only stick to these methods. You have to make sure you do it either through Amazon's own platform or you stick by Amazon's exact review request guidelines. You should not be going through and trying to reach out to customers individually to request the reviews. You can put product inserts in to request reviews, but you cannot encourage a customer to leave a five-star review. And better yet, when you see a negative review such as some of these, Amazon's going to give you some actions that you can take. You can either contact the customer, post a public reply, or request removal. If you choose to contact a customer, one of the worst things you can do to, in Amazon's eyes is ask that customer to give you or change the review from what they did to a positive review. You should not at any point in time ask any customer to give you a positive review if they already gave you a negative one. You should, in Amazon's eyes, do whatever you can to make it up to that customer, whatever was wrong there, if the product was damaged, if they need a refund, whatever it is, and then hope that the customer will change the review. But asking them specifically to leave a five-star review is definitely something that is going to get you taken off the platform. Now, is it impossible to get back up? No, uh, it's not impossible to get back up with any of these situations. In fact, the biggest thing that you need to understand if you by chance break any of Amazon's rules, even one of these critical ones, one of the issues that can you know lead to account suspension, something as critical as you know buying someone else's product and leaving a negative review, which by the way, is another critical suspendable uh, issue that people will face. Do not buy your competitor's products and leave a bad review. Definitely a bad idea. But if you by chance do get suspended in one of these situations, and you are trying to get uh, the issue resolved, get reactivated by Amazon, there are some key things that you need to make sure that you are doing. You need to, one, own up to it. Amazon goes by a guilty until proven innocent system. If you know that whatever Amazon suspended you for, you in fact did, the best thing that you can do is own up to it. This may seem counterintuitive, but the reality of it is, is that Amazon will be a lot more graceful in what they do uh, with your account if you are truthful with them because they already know that you broke the you know rule. They already know that you did something wrong. They are trying to get you to own up and give some form of change. How are you going to change this? So own up, second aspect that is explain how it happened. Was this a mistake? Was this malicious intentional? It wasn't. You should say that it wasn't. <laughs> you should always try and lead with the idea that, yes, I did this, and oh, I am so sorry. I didn't mean to. It was such a problem. Yes, sorry, won't happen again. How do you go about that won't happen again? Write them out a short reason as to why it happened, the issue that caused it, how you're going to solve it. Make sure to follow that standard, right? It really, really helps to look at the exact policy that you actually broke, leading them to cause this deactivation, and then referencing how you're going to abide by that policy. Now, this is not a surefire way whatsoever to get your account reinstated. It may take a lot of different uh, tries to get it reinstated and appeals going through the process, but it is some of the things where if you are dealing with one of these issues, can definitely be resolved. I have not seen a situation uh, very often where, you know, any one type of policy violation can't be resolved at least one time by some seller out there. Amazon has gotten a lot more strict with their policing of different policy violations, but at the end of the day, as long as you are sticking to the standard 
and trying your best not to break any policy violations knowingly or trying to cause harm on the platform, you should be good to go.